Um, is it Sean or Swain in Leesville? Sean? They yeah. might have typoed it for me. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. My question is, between between the Big Bang and, the Ever and God Created Earth, I wonder if the whole thing happened at the same time or what? You talking about you talking about the biblical act, the biblical description? Um, everyone keeps saying that the Big Bang has happened and that created Earth. And on the other end, I'm also hearing that God has created Earth and everything. And I was wondering if both of those happened at the same time, and no one didn't realize it. All right. Well, uh, if God created the universe, and the method that He used was the Big Bang. How would you tell the difference? If God used evolution to uh, create all the species, how would you know? How would you know if there was a God involved or not? Another way to address your question is to remind you that the, the Earth is uh, dated somewhere around 4.3, 4.4 billion years old, I think it is. And um, the universe is right around 14 billion years old. So I mean, we have a, about a billion year gap between what would be the Big Bang and the formation of the Earth and the solar system. Okay. They, I, I don't know if this is accurate. Uh, they, they put a summary of your question up where you were saying, is it possible that the Big Bang and the creation event that the Bible described uh, both happened? Um, I'd say that the answer to that is no. The biblical account of creation is demonstrably false. It is not in the, the same order of, of how we know things occurred. I mean, it has plants before the sun. Uh, it has the earth you know, in the beginning. That's not the case. As, as Aaron just pointed out, the universe is about 14 billion years old and the Earth's about four and a half billion years old. So obviously one, they weren't around at the same time. One very simple way to look at this is that, that you have to realize that the stories in Genesis are written from the perspective of someone who lives on the Earth, has limited knowledge of the Earth, and no knowledge whatsoever of anywhere else in the universe. Everything is geocentric in that perspective. And so, of course, the, the Earth is like an infinite plane. And the stars, along with the sun and the moon, were all created at the same time, in the same breath. Somehow it took four days to create the Earth, but one instant to create the sun, the moon, and the stars. And there's no recognition of the fact that the moon is just a, a body of rock, much as we, or that the sun is just another star. The people who wrote those stories had no idea. They were people. And that's where the limitations are. Yeah, the, the, only, the only kind of apologetic that goes along those lines w in order to distinguish what we're reading, for example, in the Bible or in any other supposed holy book, um, is, is that these people uh, supposedly received their, their inspiration and their information uh, through some divine psychic hotline uh, to God. Well, not only is, is that something that is not supported by evidence, but either their God is just a bumbling buffoon who can't relay information effectively or didn't know what he was talking about, or they're just wrong. And, and there was no communication. Well, if there was no communication, then you don't have any book um, that tells you anything at all about any being that you might want to call a god. So you've got a big storybook. And, you know, while there, there may be some cool stories in there, um, there's no reason for anybody, at least no reason that I can see, for anybody to base their understanding of reality and the universe and science and, and the world in which we live uh, upon that book. Living here in the United States, you are no doubt uh, immersed in a thoroughly Christian society, and that's probably the only perspective that you're aware of. Any other religious perspective is going to be uh, a smaller group, a subgroup, a, a, a cult, or something along those lines. But the reality is that while Christianity, uh, all-inclusive, all 38,000 uh, different denominations combined, do collectively account for the world's largest uh, religion. Just after that you've got Islam and then after that you've got Hinduism. And if we look at Hinduism for a moment, we're talking about 800 million people who have a completely independent view of religion. It's a totally different Godhead than anything that you're familiar with. I mean, if you were to read the Bhagavad Gita, in it Lord Krishna describes how he created not just this earth but many others. How he created not just this universe but a multiverse. Now this book was written 
centuries at least before the Bible was begun. The earliest archaeological evidence that you have of the Bible is maybe 300, uh, 300 BCE, and that's it. And uh, the Bhagavad Gita was already complete centuries before that. Now, here's a religious perspective in which a man claims to be uh, Krishna, which means Christ, effectively. We're talking about the same sort of individual. He talks about how he created the, the world. Now, if you were to read the Bhagavad Gita, and it were to strike you as truth, and I, I guess I don't have anything to say about this, but then what I would predict is that when you read the Bhagavad Gita, it will come across to you not as divine wisdom, not as revealed truth. I would think that you would read this ancient document, this sacred tome, and come away thinking that this was just a storybook and that it wasn't as divine or wise or moral as it was reputed to be. And once you read the Bhagavad Gita, if you were to come to that opinion of it, you would then have a very good idea, the perspective that I have, reviewing your Bible. The content of this video is produced by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you enjoyed this content and are willing and able to provide a donation, please visit the website below.